While finishing up my unpolished reflection on abortion and euthanasia, I began reading a collection of the Marquis de Sade's work. In my reflection, I poorly explained that while I may be burying myself alive under the crushing weight of debt and discrimination, and that my true preference would be <clears throat> preferences would be to die or withdraw entirely from society to spare the world my toxicity, I do feel an obligation to find ways to, um, to share with the world as long as I choose to be a part of it. I have adapted one of Saad's philosophical dialogues, his 1782 dialogue between a priest and a dying man into a 24, well, a little longer apparently than 24 minute monologue. The editors of the Marquis de Sade, Justine, Philosophy in the Bedroom, and other writings consider this to be one of his tamest works. I struggle severely with memorization and with staging my space for skit filming on any reasonable timeline, so I will read. I am also a technophile, currently quite creeped out by technology due to some personal experiences that compound the general tech gets creepier as we age trend. Between that and working with old technology under frustrating constraints, I am again choosing to deliver this piece underprepared and unnecessarily divided into parts. This is part three of, no, this is part four of what was supposed to be three. Ha! Huh. Almost made it to the end. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to back up since this is, oh, let me make sure I have, yes. Since I have a full 10 minutes and this is the key part, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. Construe this not, my friend, as encouragement to crime. No. We should avoid crime as much as we can. But one must learn to shun it through reason and not through false fears, which lead to naught, and whose effects are so quickly overcome in any moderately steadfast soul. Reason, sir, yes, our reason alone should warn us that harm done our fellows can never bring happiness to us. And our heart, that contributing to their felicity is the greatest joy nature has accorded us on earth. Render others as happy as one desires oneself to be, and never inflict more pain upon them than one would like to receive at their hands. There you are, my friend. Those are the only principles we should observe. And you need neither God nor religion to appreciate and subscribe to them. You need only have a good heart. But I feel my strength ebbing away, preacher. Put away your prejudices. Unbend. Be alive. Be human. Without fear and without hope, forget your gods and your religions too. They are none of them good for anything but to set man at odds with man. And the mere name of these horrors has caused greater loss on life, greater loss of life on earth than all other wars and all other plagues combined. Renounce the idea of a master of the universe. There is none. But do not renounce the pleasure of being happy and of making happiness in this world. Nature offers you no other way of doubling your existence, of extending it. My friend, Lewd pleasures were ever dearer to me than anything else. I have idolized them all my life, and my wish has been to end it in their bosom. My end draws near. Six women, lovelier than the light of day, are waiting in the chamber adjoining. I have reserved them for this moment. Partake of the feast Following my example, embrace them instead of the vain sophistries of superstition. 
under their caresses, strive for a little while to forget your hypocritical beliefs. I rang, the women entered, and after I had been a little while in their arms, the preacher became one whom nature has, quote, corrupted, unquote, all because he had not, had not succeeded in explaining what a corrupt nature is. Scene. All right, so, yes, I still have a couple more minutes. I'm going to switch the camera view. Ba -da -ba. Let's see. Oh. I suppose I will not switch the camera view. I guess you'll get it in reflection. Well, that's cool. All right, so this is the actual text with my notes that I made, my underlines. I'm not reading you the whole thing. I'm just sharing. And I didn't put today's readings, um, but I only read through it a few times aloud. Um, I remember... I can't remember what it was in, but I read something or watched something that said that um, Sir Anthony Hopkins read through one of his... Do I have my sleeve? That's going to be a fun video. That's so much fun. So let me turn back a few more pages and try again. Cool. All right. So I'm sharing my notes from the book um, without the sleeve this time in the way. Not a lot of note taking. Here's what I was talking about with the reading. That's where I was rubbing my finger over before. Um, made some of my notes. More notes. Where I didn't want to read the priesty bits. And so I turned it into a monologue. And this is where I thought I was originally going to end part one to make it three that's where I thought I would get to. It was somewhere in the middle. Uh, this is the piece that I didn't really want to cut out. I wanted to figure out a way to work in the the bullet. Um, is it not necessary that the gunpowder it might ignite when you set a spark to it? But I didn't do well enough undialoguing that. And so I gave up on that part. Alright, so then we've got this page. Um, that's one place I considered ending part two. Um, and this was because I didn't type it all up. I should have typed and read to you that way, but I wanted to go ahead and get this piece out. Um, and so there it is. Um, and this was the only place that I noticed Saad using God language as if he believed. Um, so that was one of the things that I changed. Um. And then we know now that there are other worlds, Mars, and, you know, the planets, and we can space, yay. So I changed it from another world that uh, was um, paralleling with this phrase. So I changed it there. Um, I changed man to alive to make it a little less misogynistic, because sometimes Saad is a little misogynistic, um, or a lot misogynistic. Um, okay. So yeah, that's the end. Thank you for experiencing this with me if you stayed through all the parts. <laughs>